And hello everybody out there in YouTube world. This is Tamaris here, bringing you a game called Echo, which looked very interesting. Uh, I probably would have done this one sooner if I didn't want to take a bit more proper time to look at it. Uh, one of the immediate weird things about this game, as we can tell, we're looking at an eyeball. That's how you navigate the main menu. That was just... That... That took me for a loop when that happened. So anyway, like I said, I gave this some proper shot. Um, it's probably a good idea. The game starts off just with a lot of story in it. Wouldn't have been that interesting of a video. So I went ahead and got to a part where there's a bit more meat and gameplay content to the game. So we'll just continue from there while we take this look. Just let that be known. I mean, so far of what I've played of it, this is a this is a pretty good game. I'm very much enjoying it. It's just the start of it is a bit slow. Okay. So the biggest thing with Echo here is these enemies, which this palace we're running around in has been making them. As you can tell, they don't know how to walk in water yet because I haven't taught them how to walk in water. The game watches your actions, and every time it's bright here, the enemies learn what you do and start copying that. So everybody's gameplay experience can be a little bit different depending on how you approach I wonder if it's a game edible. like this. I'm starving. Best thing I ever had. So see right there. There's that little echo there that we made, hence the name of the game. So now we're teaching the enemies to eat fruit. I don't know if they know why. They just know they can eat fruit. Yeah, all right. So let's get down here. Okay. Now they won't know how to do it yet. You have to wait until there's a blackout. Then they learn what you did previous day, quote unquote. I guess that's what I would call it. Oh, it's a very large palace here, though it looks very nice. There are some kind of wide open spaces and not a lot going on. But these are the interesting times because the character in the story hasn't found this out yet, but during these times when it's all dark like this, they cannot learn what you're doing. So whatever you're doing, even if it's something like that, they don't know what you just did. Just knock that one away. Those are the most jarring parts of this game. Because it just full stops everything for just a quick moment. Okay. See? There they go. Eating the fruit. <laughs> I showed them eating fruit, and now they're eating fruit. They don't mind the water anymore. Uh -oh. That's spoiled it. They have been getting faster. So... The game has two main resources. You have a stamina bar, which is used primarily for the sprinting. I think there's a couple little things it can be used for that I haven't found yet, but it's primarily sprinting. This is all going terribly right now. The other one is the energy, which are those triangles next to me, and those power all your jumping over the pits and the gun. I'm trying not to use the gun during the light because I don't know what happens if they learn how to use a gun. Wait! I actually am now realizing I don't even know where to bring this key. Right there. So 
And that's gonna be a bit more difficult since now they know sprinting and using the stun. Whiskey. Luckily they haven't learned how to shoot the lethal part of it and we're dead. Yeah, okay. It's actually the first time I've experienced dead in this game. Because early on they're not very challenging because they're very underdeveloped and don't know a lot. Stay away. I really shouldn't be showing them that. So that's what... That's kind of what's gripping me with the gameplay of this, because there is some slight simplicity to it. But it's this whole dynamic of trying to decide when it's a good time to use a feature and when it's not. Knowing that the enemies will end up using that against you. Give me that fruit. I think all the fruit does is refill our stamina bars. There they are, reformed there. They don't mind the water. I'm not. I'm still not completely certain if this game is considered a stealth game. I mean, you can't really do anything hide, like there's no cover stuff like that, like you would get in some of the more dedicated stealth games, but you can break the line of sight, and that's at least what these colors mean on this short range radar thingy jigger. Oh. And we gotta charge that last bar. So there's little pickups that will charge up the additional parts of your energy there, but that last one will always recharge. So I have to wait patiently, which I do not want to be doing right about now. That's the key. It's a little bit hard to figure out what I'm saying when stuff's actually happening. Ooh, the flowers changed. They're getting more capable after every blackout. I think there's more to it. I have a weird feeling that the palace is registering my moves with those icy holographs. Then using the information to improve the abilities of those things. A little far between the dots there, Anne. I just feel like there's some strange rhythm to it. A warped set of rules. You are definitely disposed to find meaning where there is none. As you say, it's in your genes. So the other voice there, I'm pretty sure I've gotten from the context here, is the ship that you flew, out, flew over here on. Blech. Trying to combine words together and it's not working. As I was saying, it's a little bit hard to figure out what to say because, like I said, I've been, I've been gripped by this game. So I end up just getting too focused and forgetting to say things. All right, so what's going on here? They're behind doors and they're gonna figure out how to open doors now. Is there anything in those doors that I'm gonna need? I don't know. I don't know, there's too many unknowns here. Like I said, it's all about Figuring out when it's time to use something and when it's not. That's where most of the challenge comes from. I mean, partly the other reason why the game's kind of got me going is it's got two big high points that always sucker me in on games, which is an interesting game world to look at, which this has. And though it's not been doing a lot now, the soundtrack is very nice, to, to my ears at least. Okay, so we need to go down somehow. I just don't know when we can go down. That's a bit too far of a drop. Stay back. Stay back. 
There's more. You know how to do that. Out of the way. Eat the fruit. Yeah, just immediately refill stamina. There's another one. Crap. See there, I got two shots. The gun has the interesting quirk to it of no matter how many people there are, if you can line up multiple people on... Hey, even got a achievement there. If you can line up multiple people, doesn't matter how many there are, it will hit and kill all of them. Doesn't matter if it's hitting the pinky, doesn't matter if it's hitting the face, they did. So you can sometimes line up some shots to make yourself feel very impressive. It's gonna be no good shutting that door. They're just gonna open it up right away. Okay. I just need to figure out where I need to go, which is over here. Getting a little bit distracted. What I do. They learn from me. I'm certain of it. They can't cross the water, but after I've done it and a blackout has evolved them, they do it without hesitation. And you saw how they were trapped behind the doors, pacing to get to me, and after I opened a few and a blackout, it was second nature to them. the characters I must pick a decent time to do this because the game characters have explained how the game actually functions the one thing I'm unsure of if those blackouts are based on a timer or if it waits until you've done a certain amount of stuff then it blacks out but honestly I feel like that's a detail I don't actually want to know the answer to Pass that one quicker. There's no real point in killing them unless it gives you a distance advantage because they'll just get remade. This the points of these blackouts kind of is that it's putting out a surge of energy to reform all of its minions. And I just need to know if they're gonna end up following us. Now, the other thing I find interesting is the way they have this sphere work. So when somebody's just nearby, this blue and the size of it is based on how much of a visible silhouette you would have seeing them. Based on either the distance or things intervening. And then it goes to yellow when they've been able to see you. And then it goes I'm to red. to learn more about that theory of yours. The one where everything makes perfect sense. Don't you see it? They unlearn as well. It's all tied to the blackout cycles. When the lights are on, the palace keeps track of my actions, registering what I do with those icy ghosts. After some time, it will reboot to update the copies. That's what's causing the blackouts. I get no ghosts when the lights are out. So my guess is that the palace is blind while it's rebooting. When the lights come back on, their abilities match my actions from the previous light cycle. But that would explain why they wouldn't cross the water up there. I didn't touch any water in the light cycle before I reached them. They echo your behavior. Yes. That's the name of the game. Echoes. That's exactly what they are. Oh, crap, I paid too much attention to what they were saying and lost track of what I was saying. That is hell? bright. They're coming. Hurry, get out. It's all dark where I'm at, so... The blinding light kind of hurts a bit more. They all 
all stopped. What are they doing? Never mind that, just get out. That is weird. Got orange light. That's different. Okay. The sphere just turned off. That means the echoes are not coming, right? You sound like naming them explains everything. To me, the logic of it all only makes the whole thing more absurd. Someone intentionally designed it to be this way. I expected there'd be some obstacles to getting Foster back. You were prepared for this? In your training, I mean. Gods, no. Gramps did talk of great challenges and equally great rewards, but well, I doubt he knew this is what it meant. You admit he was wrong? Yes and no. I think he managed to find the words, but not their meaning. Okay. See, so yeah, the, the visuals of this game just look very nice, very well done. It's definitely a game so that. So many words in your teachings keep about rebuilding this place? That's the thing. None of us ever knew this place existed. He always gestured at a walled enclosure in the uppermost garden when he talked about the palace. I think we all imagined splendid halls filled with the chosen ones who mastered a self-control so deep it could overcome even death. So he lied to you? He just didn't get into the specifics. If we passed the trials all the way to the upper terrace, we would be granted access to the passage. The ones who entered never returned to tell. The translation? I know that now. Back then, we all thought the passage meant the final test. The big one this time. The flesh and the soul shall enter the palace through separate doors. Only the strong of mind and body will again reunite as whole. We'd seen resourcefuls break during training. Minds or bodies hurt beyond repair. I can see why you would all strive for that. That wasn't the selling point. The challenge and reward stuff was. Being a resourceful is constant competition, always performing to the best of your ability. There's if a lot of win, story exposition going on. We don't even have the beginning of it in this video. Of a mental life ending. Competition breeds envy. It must have been dangerous for you if you really were as good as you say. Excellence was valued by everyone. The more formidable your competition, the more fruitful the exercise. In the end, everybody won. That's quite the social construct, considering the consequences of losing. That was Gramps' way. He didn't preach. It was pure reasoning. The program made sure all resourcefuls were logically disposed to follow his line of argument to its conclusion. <laughs> How can you deny perfection? How could you? Spontaneity. Chaos. Life. That's how you prove yourself. Why spend eternity to make the best possible you? Potential without release. I'm still not sure whether I should talk over them. Not part of me doesn't want to talk over them just because it's actually like well done voice acting. So those two would be the better voices to listen to in terms of quality in this video, rather than my nonsense, stupid voice of badness. But no, when it, to try and change back to what I was saying before, the one thing I would like is it does feel like there could be a tad more depth back in the inside, gameplay parts. N, be careful. You're not beginning to like me, are you? Well, I can't attack my glass of water again. Because he was. Just move that out of his way. It wasn't even in his way, it was on a table. That's enough about my cat. You didn't come here to listen to me talk to my cat. Maybe you did. I don't know. We're here to check out this game of blinding lights. Blinding lights and copycats. And chairs. Many, many chairs. Hallways filled to the brim with chairs. That is the one thing I have definitely noticed in this. 
What's that strange archway? It's a suspended Y field. Never seen a vertical one before. It looks like you're supposed to pass through. What does it do? Shouldn't do anything. It's self-contained. I think it's a save point. Yep. Save arches. Call it. Is this the door we use? Nope. That's how the game tells you that these are doors you're not supposed to take. I kind of like it. Oh, we got another little crystal thing. Yoink. Those are basically Legend of the Zelda heart pieces, but for your energy bars. Except for you collect six rather than four. The thing that seems interesting to me to have get have done. That's a thing. I made up a sentence. You should deal with it. But the more interesting part is that uh, there was an achievement, because I decided to thumb through the achievements, because why not, of getting the Echoes to pick up those pieces for you. So, not sure how that one's supposed to go down. So now we're about to have some elevator racing, since I've been using elevators around them in the daytime. And that's how this all works. should be going. Push. Just didn't want to deal with any of the nonsense that comes from that. There they are. That is just I wanted a friend down here. Not you. For a second I thought the one I pushed was moving. I did not see that one. Go away. I kind of want to hang around here because I want to get these energies before I move on. Come on. Here it comes. It's at least good that there's an audio buildup before any of that happens. Otherwise, it would feel very random. But now it doesn't. Another one? They just never stop. That's right, go take the elevator. There you are, go. <laughs> Wait! Nope, can't jump. I was sprinting. Yeah. All this time I got the cat attacking my door. Can stop scratching up that door. Cats, I tell you. Like little Dickish roommates. Why are there no elevators down here? Yep, we go. Not close enough to the railing, but at least slows them down. Why are there so many? Elevators work when the power's off. So there's that, I guess. Come on, there we go. Run time. And 
dig this elevator. Ah! Alright. That's not exactly the most action-packed game out there, but... You know, we don't always need everything to be all action-packed. We've got plenty of those on the market in case you're needing them. Descent. That's another point where the energy can get taken up in this game is when the falls are very high. They start taking up energy to keep you from, you know, dying. This is new. Manifest corruption. So, cancer. It triggered an instant blackout. Probably to correct the anomaly. It didn't fix it. It just moved. Huh. That's weird. But we don't have enough time in the confines of this video to find out about what that's all about. Grab one of those pickups. Crystal orbs. Oh, crystal orb. Let's see what this advance uses. It's bludgeoning. Pressing B will not push an enemy. Bludgeon it instead. Strike is lethal. The aim on left trigger and throw on right trigger. Enemies will investigate the sound of crystal ball shattering. Hold a crystal ball. Quick throw. Indicator. Okay. It's a throwing item. Simple as that. So here we get choices. So we can either show it to walk on water, or to use doors, or to even use elevators, since we had that little blackout up there. It doesn't know how to do anything. It's a blank slate. Let's go with doors. It with the crystal ball because I want to know what it did. I actually kind of wonder what happens if you push them in the water when they don't know about using water. Does it make a glitch in the matrix? So get away faster. Let me distract it with the fruit eating. Ball. Too late to grab the ball. Ah, I'm just not paying attention because it's also late, so I'm a little bit tired. I'll make up as many excuses as I want. You all are just going to have to live with that. Or you don't. Most of you have probably turned off by now. I watch the YouTube analytics. Bash you over the head with that crystal ball. That was a bit of an intense sound effect for that, too. Open this door. It's such fancy furniture. Oh crap, they're gonna know about picking these things up now. Huh? Oh, they're distracted with just door opening. <laughs> There's a door up here I can open. How about that? Pick up the crystal ball, I want to pick it up. Okay. At least got the crystal ball. Luckily they still don't know about water. I mean they know about water now. But only now. Oh, I should take a center. Ah, I didn't make it. An open door. Ugh. 
those. I keep thinking I can get away from them quicker than I actually can. Give me that little bit of stamina boost. I was about to say sprint boost. It doesn't boost our sprinting speed. Alright, we can get out of the water before it thinks about that. Of course, I've already walked in the water. You guys are gonna know how to jump soon. Strip in with some noise, hopefully. And place the key. Ah, oh, crap, I need multiple keys. Oh well. Well, I think at this point we've all kind of gotten a general idea of how Echo is. Uh, I'm still finding it. Like I said, it's not the most action-packed, crazy game out there. But, oh, they picked up one of the keys! That's why I can't find it! Clever girl! Quote, Jurassic Park. That's clearly where that quote came from. It's come from nowhere else. Give me that key. Yeah, little copycat. Couldn't think of a word to use there for a moment. Yeah, anyway. Rather than just sit here and watch me just try to figure out what to say because I keep getting distracted way too much for my own good. Uh, you probably have an idea of whether or not you would be interested in purchasing and playing this game. Not the most action-packed game, but I still think it's quite enjoyable and quite fun. I definitely don't regret buying it, which is more than can be said of a number of the Steam games I've been trying out here lately. So, yeah, I recommend it. That's the takeaway from this video. And that I struggle to come up with things to say. But if any of you have watched anything I've done before, you're already well aware of this fact. And I realize I sat there the whole time saying that I was just basically going to leave the video and not have you watch me get the key. As I proceed to get the key trying to say that, because I don't know how to end these. So you know what? I'll just end it the next blackout. So prepare yourselves, because the end is nigh. Seriously, this is actually a pretty damn good game. My humble opinion.